alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency is the hereditary genetic condition that leads to low levels of the protein alpha-1 antitrypsin in the circulation. And that, low le that lowering of the normal levels uh, leads to the uh, attack by the body's own white blood cells on lung tissue under certain circumstances. Um, about 1% of the COPD population has um, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency as a major contributor to their COPD, but more than 95% of those COPD patients who have alpha-1 don't know they have it because they haven't gotten the simple blood test uh, that lets you know that you have alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. So you might wonder why people don't get diagnosed if they have alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency-related COPD. The problem is that there's nothing definitive that distinguishes an alpha-1-caused COPD from general COPD by simply talking to the patient or examining the patient or even sometimes looking at x-rays. There are some cues um, to that make a physician decide to test for alpha-1, the most important message is that the only way that you can tell that a COPD patient has alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency is to test them. Simple blood test, even a buckle swab like CSI Miami um, uh, is available to um, test for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. And in fact, and probably an equally important point, virtually all um, <clears throat> Uh, clinical practice guidelines related to alpha-1 have recommended that every COPD patient be tested once in their life for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, regardless of whether they are young of age or have minimal smoking history. Because even in people that look like classic older COPD patients who smoke cigarettes, getting a diagnosis of alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency can affect your treatment and affect your health into the future. So you might wonder um, if I have a patient, uh, a series of uh, COPD patients in my that have been in my practice for years, decades. Um, how do I approach the concept of testing them for alpha one antitrypsin deficiency, um, in a and uh, a situation where you might be concerned that they'd wonder why you hadn't tested them before? And the fact is that um, the general community. Um, at present, doesn't follow that guideline. And you, uh, as a clinician, could say, I've, I've learned some new things about COPD, and I uh, think it's not likely that you have this, but I've learned that it's probably a good idea to test for this, because if it turns out you have this, there are things we can do that are slightly different than what we do for COPD patients in general. Physicians that are thinking about testing for alpha-1 often find that there are several different methodologies for testing. You can check a blood level of alpha-1 antitrypsin protein by looking at a tube of blood. You can uh, check for the type of alpha-1 antitrypsin protein circulating in the blood. Um, that's in the past been called phenotyping, um, and now we call it pi typing for protease inhibitor typing. Or you could look at the gene for alpha-1 and see if it's abnormal. Um, clearly, genotyping will give you uh, many of the answers that you need to know, but genotyping may not pick up some of the most rare forms of alpha-1. And it's often recommended that you use two types of testing, some uh, either a level testing plus pi typing or a level testing plus genotyping in order to identify uh, the most uh, alpha-1 antitrypsin uh, abnormalities that are out in the public right now. Um, there are over 200 mutations of the alpha-1 gene that have been identified, although the vast majority of those are extremely rare. But important to find out, uh, if someone seems to have a history that's consistent with alpha-1, uh, but doesn't have one of the more common genotypes. And you can find that out by combining a level testing with one of the other tests. It takes um, about seven years from the time that lung symptoms first start in an alpha-1 patient to the time they actually get tested. And more than that, 
they've had to uh, go from physician to physician, as many as three to five different physicians before uh, a physician thinks to test them for alpha-1. And so this diagnostic delay is um, extremely uh, unfortunate because every year that goes by with an alpha-1 patient not receiving appropriate therapy, more lung tissue is destroyed. The reason that most of these people are not diagnosed is because of the fact there's nothing that necessarily distinguishes them from a physician's other COPD patients, which is why the most um, successful way to identify the alpha-1 patients in your practice um, for a physician is to test all patients with COPD for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. So you might wonder, in what ways does making the diagnosis affect the treatment of COPD? Um, if someone has alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Well, the first step in treatment of alpha-1-related COPD is to do all the things that you would normally do for a COPD patient, which includes um, immunizations, uh, avoiding lung infections, treating uh, lung infections aggressively, pulmonary rehab, smoking cessation, oxygen when it's indicated. All of that is still the same for alpha-1 patients, but alpha-1 patients have one treatment that is not available to those who don't have alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, and that is a uh, treatment called augmentation therapy, sometimes called replacement therapy, which is um, plasma-derived alpha-1 antitrypsin protein that's purified from the plasma of healthy volunteers and uh, is uh, concentrated and given as a weekly intravenous infusion to people who have lung disease due to alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. And what that does is replenish the amount of alpha-1 antitrypsin protein in the body, in the blood, in the lungs, and thereby put that protection up against the damage uh, that occurs uh, in alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. So my uh, main advice to clinicians in general, and especially clinicians starting out in practice seeing COPD patients, is test every patient for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Easy to do, free in some circumstances. Finding that one patient um, can change that patient's life and health um, by uh, being able to get them on appropriate therapy and also doing family counseling um, so that uh, people know what the risks are to their children developing liver or lung disease or other conditions that are associated with alpha-1, and also to raise awareness within families that uh, their family members should get tested. Even though it is rare, and people say it's like looking for a needle in a haystack, the fact that I was diagnosed had made a huge difference in the life of both my brother and myself. 